we're talking, well, not officially, but summer. Anybody notice the pollen yesterday? Good, good, you did. We will be looking forward to having many pine cones this year. Welcome as we worship uh, those online. It's great to have you with us. I invite you to send down the Blue Friendship Book, put your name and other information there, and then send it down back to the center, if you would. <coughs> oh, you're over there. <coughs> Andrew, our Youth and Family uh, Director, has a few announcements. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, thank you so much for praying for us this week. Uh, we had a team of 16 at various times. We kind of had a lot of moving parts to go, down, go up to Denver and serve this week. And everybody made it back and no limbs were lost and everything. <laughs> so thank you for your prayers. Uh, I'll share a little bit more about that during the children's sermon. But on July, Sunday, July 21st, we're going to have a whole presentation. Look forward to showing you pictures. But if you see some youth, ask them how the week went. Uh, as a reminder for youth group, we are on this Wednesday at 630. So I uh, hope to see you there. Uh, also, two other things I wanted to mention in regards to our kids. First of all, thank you for your participation in the church challenge. Uh, we've actually been overwhelmed with the participation. It's great. Uh, but one decision we've made is we have prizes for those who complete their cards. We're going to just do that the first Sunday of each month. So go ahead and keep doing those. Turn them in, but we'll do the prizes just once a month. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is why I'm wearing this shirt. Why are you wearing this shirt? You probably wondered. You're like, wow, this guy goes to Denver and he gets all casual. <laughs> well, last week I was wearing an orange shirt, so you never know what you're going to get with me. But uh, this is for our day camp, our VBS, Vacation Bible School. Uh, we have four counselors from Rainbow Trail Lutheran Camp coming down to do that July 22nd to the 26th. And I just want to let you know that registration is open. So on the bulletin board over there, there are these nice little registration forms. Uh, we hope that you can join us. We provide this free for your kids. I would also encourage you to think about other kids, whether you have uh, grandkids, cousins, second cousins, neighbors. neighbors. Now is the time to invite them. We're looking forward to a great week, and registration starts today. Thank you. Welcome back. Next week, we are worshiping where? Outside. Outside. Are you excited? Yeah. Um, so for those of you who don't know, every other week during the summer, we work outside and weather permitting. And so we go inside, outside. Some people would like to be outside every week. Other people have allergies and various things. So that's why we do it both ways. Some updates on people. Uh, you have been hearing about our, they were tiny twins, and now they are about seven and eight pounds. Uh, that's Jaden and Nathan. But, but, it's like a television commercial, this gets better. They are now both home. So we give thanks to the Lord for his healing upon both of these who were born three months premature and were one and a half pounds. And so uh, great, great thanks also to the staff of not only St. Francis Hospital, but a hospital in Denver. Also, bad news, good news, many of you know Dave Wintermute. Uh, this last Sunday, Dave was parachuting, 13th time and had a hard landing, broke his femur, broke his pelvis, and three vertebrae. <laughs> that, that, you respond very well. Um, the fact of it is I talked, I, I visited him on Thursday in the hospital. He was eating, he was sitting up, he was talking, and ready to be uh, discharged from the ICU to another floor where they would do some rehabilitation. So. Uh, praise God for his work in his life and protecting him from something far, far worse. Ah, uh, Lisa. Lisa. So how are people going to get these new directories? Oh, they're in the mailbox. Okay. Oh, no, please announce in the mailbox.
that's, a, that's amazing how consistent the message is. Also, big thanks to George and Chris Cooper for putting these all together. Um, so when you get them and you notice how good they are, make sure to thank them, right? Gosh, we could just go on for hours. We won't. We, we won't. Uh, men's fire pit coming up this week. That's sort of like uh, the men's barbecue. Uh, it's just that we're not going to prepare as much food. And so it's just a way of having snacks. So if you're coming, and we do invite you men to come, uh, that's at the Ricky's house. Um, please eat before unless you are planning on snacking the whole night. <laughs> Numbers of other things I'll simply have you read. On the back of your insert, it talks about the Crossways Bible study coming this fall. So we've included kind of a little bookmark there. Uh, look that over. It's a two-year program. Tuesday nights where we'll be helping you read through the entire Bible. We will be gathering. There will be questions. There will be homework. Um, so it's a way to really um, invest yourself in the scriptures and get a sense of the whole uh, sweep of the story. All right. Those are as many announcements as I'm going to make. I invite you to turn to the front part of your red hymnal, page 94, for the brief order of confession. Please stand and face the baptismal font. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <clears throat> Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Where the 
filling water flow Paths of dark and cloudy heaven Lead me all my journey through Strong deliverer, strong deliverer Cheer me with your mighty arm Death of death and hell's destruction Grant me safe on gain and side Songs and praises, songs and praises I will raise forevermore I will raise I invite you to turn to the front part of your hymnals, page 138. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The prayer of the day is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of those who hope in you, be present and hear our prayers. And because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the children to come forward. Good morning again. I'll give you all some time to get down here. It's good to see you all. I was wondering, how many of you have a roof over your head at home and right now? Everybody. Everybody. Not everybody. How, how many of you had breakfast this morning? Everybody. <laughs> everybody. Um, how many of you had some nice clothes to put on to come to church today? Everybody. <laughs> I think we can safely say everybody sitting here would answer that yes. But this week, we went and served in Denver. The youth did, middle schoolers and high schoolers and some adults, and some adults who are still like kids, like me. And we served people who struggle with some of those needs. They don't answer that question, yes, every day. I wanted to share uh, the words of Jesus. He said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now, ultimately, Jesus is talking about himself. The greatest gift that we can give anybody is to know Jesus and have a relationship with him. But the thief, that's talking about the enemy, about Satan. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And there are a lot of people in our world, 
even maybe in your neighborhood or in our city or in our state who don't have things because it's been taken from them or you know, they've lost or they've had a hard time. Uh, this, another thing that we talked about on our mission trip is half of, half of being on mission with Jesus is just showing up. Have you ever felt like, uh, I don't know if I want to go to church. Uh, I don't know if I want to do my homework. Uh, I don't know if I want to help my dad with that project at home. But I would encourage you this week to think about when you have an opportunity to serve, half of it is just showing up. And I just wanted to brag on uh, two of our students. I, I was thinking, I think Jenna and Clara, on Thursday we were at the Action Center. And we had lots, uh, this is a place in Denver where they provide food for people who need it. And so every day people come through and they can get food. And we were helping mostly in the background, stocking things and different things like that. And uh, I was going to talk about Jenna real quick. Jenna was helping with uh, the bakery. Do any of you know Jenna? She's back there. Ah, smile, yeah. Hey, Jenna. <laughs> and so the morning, she and Clara were working on the bakery. So they were getting to get all of the snacks and food and all of that, like the desserts. It's a pretty fun job. And you get to put it out and get it ready. But then at lunchtime, some of the other team members said, you know what, we don't want to do this other job because we're kind of bored doing that. Can we do that job? And they're like, oh, okay. And Jenna in particular said, okay, I'll give up that job and I'll go do the, the boring job, in, in her opinion. So she went and did that for a while, but they actually ran out of stuff for her to do. So then she got moved to the front and she was working with the people coming in. And I would say about 75% of the people who came in were speaking Spanish. They were Hispanic. And so for the rest of the afternoon, Jenna was walking along and trying to speak Spanish and helping these people as they were coming in for food. I just thought that was pretty cool. Here she was willing to do whatever she was asked, but then God put her in a position that she could talk to and encourage these people. And my encouragement to you this week is whatever you're doing, you have an opportunity to share the light and love of Jesus. And I would encourage you to show up. Can I pray for you? Father, I thank you for our students this last week who went to Denver and showed up. That's more than half the battle sometimes. Uh, a lot of times we don't feel like it. But Lord, I pray and thank you that they did. And I pray for these kids in their lives that they would show up and serve you and that you would work through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. If you're going to Wiggle Worship, you can head on back. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 3. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord, God, walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called out to the man and said, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, the woman whom you gave me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and, and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the, the serpent tricked me and I ate. And then the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, Cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. <clears throat> Our second reading is from Second Corinthians chapter 4. 
we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, and what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know if the earthly tent that we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This ends our reading. <clears throat> Hear the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 3. The crowd came together again, so that they, the disciples, could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul. And by the ruler of demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. <clears throat> How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then, indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said... He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. The crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. He replied, Who are my mothers and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mothers and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Please be seated. So that whole view, that whole scene of Jesus uh, and people saying he's out of his mind is something for us to look at a bit closer. So a couple of weeks ago, I was in Denver at a meeting. I was in my car pulling out of a parking lot and I saw a man and a bike crossing the intersection. Now the man wasn't riding the bike and he wasn't walking the bike. What was he doing with it? He was 
pulling it with a rope. He was leading it like a horse. It was a three-wheeled bike. Now, it sounds like a joke, but it's not. Why would you pull a perfectly good three-wheel bicycle? It seemed a little crazy. Maybe I thought, he's crazy. And I wanted to find out why. So what did I do? I asked him. I asked, I, I, I rolled down the window and I said, hey, I just got to ask, why are you pulling your bike with a rope? He said, I found it on the street. There was a basket in it, and it was filled with syringes and drug paraphernalia. And I figured it belonged to a drug pusher. So, I decided to take it. And since it didn't have a seat, I couldn't ride it, so I figured I would pull it. Now, I don't know if that was legal, but the man was making sense. He wasn't crazy. He was just practical. Crazy. It's what the people were saying about Jesus. He is beside himself. He's gone out of his mind. Crazy. And why did they think that? Jesus has just sent the disciples two by two to the surrounding villages so that they can teach and pray and heal people. They have now returned. And as they have returned, people have been crowding in, wanting to hear more, wanting to be healed, having all kinds of needs to be addressed. And in fact, there were so many people that were gathered together that disciples couldn't do what? Eat. Now imagine a sleepy little town called Capernaum, where they were. Are they um, used to such crazy things? Well, no. Such excitement. Some unusual, unexpected, abnormal happenings. They're thinking, this is crazy. And then they think, who's in charge? And they know it's Jesus. He's responsible for this. He must have gone out of his mind. He's gone off the deep end. He's loony. And when Jesus' family hear what people are saying, what do they do? They go to do what? Did you catch that? Restrain him. I'm thinking, uh, what do you call that jacket? Straight jacket, white coats. They've come to take him home, keep him safe. It's, in, it's an interesting charge, crazy. Is Jesus crazy? No. He's simply doing what the Father wants him to do. He is doing what the Father, uh, what our Father in Heaven wants all of us to do. To notice people, to see a need, to fill it, to care enough to do something, to act and to care in His name. Jesus is not crazy. He's the most sane pe person who's ever lived. The accusations get worse. The authorities hear about it. They show up. And now they accuse him, not of being crazy, but of being evil. Did you catch what they said? He has Beelzebel. That's a different word for Satan. By the prince of demons, he casts out demons. He's in league with them. He's on the other side. He is bad. He is dark. He is evil. People jumping to conclusions calling Jesus into question, misunderstanding his ministry, getting it all wrong. And what is that like for Jesus? And how does he respond? Before we get to him, let's think about ourselves. If you were in his position, what would you be feeling? What would you be saying? What, how would you react? 
or when you have been misunderstood, maybe by a family member or a coworker. When someone calls you into question, what do you do? It's easy to get defensive, to avoid responsibility, and to blame. Are you familiar with any of those? Don't raise your hand. It's what Adam and Eve did. We hear it in that first reading. God says, where are you? After he has said, don't eat the forbidden fruit. But they have eaten, and now they are hiding among the bushes, afraid to show their face. It's a good question. Where are you? It's a good question to ponder. Where are you in relation to life? Where are you in relation to other people in your family? Where are you in your career? Where are you in your sense of purpose? Where are you in relationship with God? It's, it's a very good question. Where are you at? God asks the question, where are you? And Adam and Eve hear it as an accusation, as an attack. They assume God is out to get them, and so they're hiding. The answer that the man gives is, well, I heard you walking in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid. God says, again, a great question, well, who told you? Who told you you were naked? I thought you looked nice the way you are. Who told you you were naked? And then God follows up with another question. Have you eaten of the tree that I commanded you not to eat? Now that's a simple yes-no question, isn't it? Have you eaten? The honest response from Adam would be, yes, I am sorry, I, I did. I, you told me not to, and I did. I am sorry, would you please forgive me? That would be owning up. That would be being honest. That would be having integrity. Instead of that, he says, the woman, where's the attention now? Somewhere else. Wasn't me. The woman oh, that you gave me, <laughs> now he's blaming God, she ate and gave something to me. So don't look at me, I'm innocent. It's her. How easily we don't take responsibility. We don't own up, but we point somewhere else. God says to the woman, what is this that you have done? The appropriate response would be pretty much the same as would be for Adam. Well, I, I, I ate of the tree, I shouldn't have, I'm sorry, I, I blew it, I was wrong, would you please forgive me? And in that sense, then there's healing that takes place, reconciliation that takes place. Often there are consequences, but then you begin the process of healing. I just talked with someone yesterday at the Y who mentioned that his parents didn't have a very good relationship and they were constantly fighting and it was never resolved. Now that is a definition of crazy. <coughs> the woman says, uh, the serpent, wasn't me, don't look at me, look at him. It's so easy to avoid responsibility. It's easy to play the blame game. And instead of owning up, we defend our actions and find fault with another. Or what happens if you are criticized in some way? Then what do you do? Often we find ourselves attacking back. If someone says, I was hurt when you said that to me, 
rather than saying, I hear what you're saying, um, I'm sorry that I said that, or I'm sorry that uh, that hurt you, can we talk about it? Instead of that, often we go on the attack and say, oh yeah? Well, how many times have you done that to me? In fact, you're, you're a lot worse than I am. Notice how we defend ourselves, how we surround ourselves with all kinds of things to avoid being hurt. We try to win, we debate, we score points, all of which keep us feeling good about ourselves. But we often don't deal with the issue. And so it never gets resolved. The root problem, I would suggest, it's all about me. I'm thinking about how I can look good, how I can have enough points, how I can win, and then I'm not thinking about you. We often take ourselves way too seriously. We often take ourselves a comment too personally. And we think it's our job to defend ourselves. And consider, whether it's with a family member or a friend or congregational member or whatever, when we're defensive, what kind of witness is that? Who are we pointing to? I don't think we're pointing here. Where are we pointing? Go ahead. Yeah, we're pointing here. Or finally, or I should say, or rather, back to Jesus. When Jesus is called into question, even when he's attacked, what does he do? He doesn't defend himself. He doesn't excuse himself. He doesn't blame someone else or go on the attack himself. What does he do? He keeps focused on the issue. The issue at hand. If others think he's crazy, so be it. He is going to do the will of the Father. He doesn't react. He chooses to respond. In our text, he says, well, if Satan is divided, then his kingdom is no more. Jesus keeps on task. Jesus is so secure in his identity as a child of God that he doesn't need to defend himself because he knows that the Father will defend him. It's the same with us. We are so easily offended. Do you know, studies have been done that if someone hears a neutral uh, observation, someone says, I see you have new shoes, that about 60 or 70% of the time, most of us will interpret that as what? A criticism. We're so easily offended we so easily get defensive, but we don't have to. Jesus' Father is also our Father. You are a child of God. Ultimately, you have nothing to prove. You've already been redeemed. You are already loved. You already are somebody. And what someone else may think may not be that important. It is not our job to defend ourselves. It's his job. He promises to do so. It's not all about us. Who is it about? 
Well, finally, it's all about him. In such a reactive, defensive world, we hear in Paul's letter to the Romans these words. Don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. Everyone else is too happy, reactive. Don't say that to me. What's wrong with you? Attacking, defending. Don't let the world squeeze you into its mold, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind in Christ Jesus. And then these words, don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought. We're children. We're his children. But think with good sense. Don't think it's all about me, because it's not. But rather think in good sense, it's all about him. And I am his child, I am his servant. We remember who we are. Remember who's got your back. Later on, Paul, in the same letter to Romans, will say this. If God is for us, who could be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him give us everything? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, was raised, and is sitting at the right hand of God, who in indeed intercedes for us. That means who prays for us. Another question. Who will separate us from the love of God? Will hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is the truth. That is the foundation on which we stand. That is our hope. And so when you are called into question, or when you see someone or they say something, and you are tempted to take it personally, or to react, or to defend, or attack, remember that nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Our lives are wrapped in him. It's not all about you. It's about your life in him. Amen. Take, oh, take.
me as I with my struggles, with my insecurities, but summon out what I shall be, what you know I am. What is his seal anyway? How about this? Set your seal upon my heart and live in me so that I become truly myself. I invite you to turn to the front part of your hymnals, page 105. With the words of the Apostles' Creed, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Take, O oh, take me as I am. Lord, we are Adam and Eve. We are the ones who hide. We are the ones who refuse to come out and say, well, this is who I am. This is where I've been. This is what I've done or said because we're afraid. Lord, you are the one who loves us without quitting. You have loved us so much that you have come yourself. You have sent your son to die for us. And in his death and life and resurrection, you make us new. Summon out what we shall be. Lord, it's John in his letter who says, we are the children of God. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But what we know is this, when he is revealed, we shall be like him. Lord, let your spirit so fill us that our attitude our responses might be more and more like our Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Lord, it's an invitation. It's a request. Sometimes it's a desperate plea. Set your seal upon me. I am weak. I can't handle everything on my own, but with you, with you in me, then I have hope, then I have strength. Lord, our prayer at the beginning says it all. You are the strength of those who hope in you. Be present and hear our prayers. And because in our weakness, we can do nothing good without you. Give us the help of your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we are surrounded by such a needy world. Hunger, homelessness, hurting. But also people who don't know who they really are. 
And so we bicker and we fight and we wonder and we question others and ourselves and it becomes all about us. Lord, you would free us and fill us and make us whole. Give us open hearts to you, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our missionary Didi Panzo and his wife as they serve in the Congo of Africa. We thank you for their witness, their ministry. Help us to learn from their example. Lord, in your mercy. For those among us, we pray for Millie and Karen, Mary, Lynn, Kelly, Electa, Dorothy. Pray for Kathy and Dave, Don, John and Duane, and for our twins. And we thank you that they are finally home. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace with one another.
The offering prayer is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He is enthroned forever at your right hand and intercedes for us. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What a great word to say when we're feeling weak. What's the word? And what's it mean? Save us. Save us. Lord, give us your strength. Give us your patience. Give us your compassion. Give us your humility, which always comes from your strength. Mm. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy eternal your reign, you have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown for your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, remembering me. After supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, remembering me. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
the body of Christ broken for you. Our Lord Jesus invites you to his table. None of us are worthy. Only as we say, as Adam and Eve might have, I'm sorry, I blew it. And he says, come. As you come to the table, I invite you to form two lines. Uh, you'll receive the bread in the center. Our assisting ministers will help you on either side. When you are done, place your empty glass in the basket and return to your place. Please be seated. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.